it sounds like a, a message there is less can be more. Less can be more. Every time I get rid of something, I get a little happier. Everyone, I want you to meet Laurel. Hi. <laughs> Laurel is part of the Blue Wonder Lady community, and we just ran into each other here at the 2023 RTR. <laughs> and Laurel had so many great stories, and I wanted to see her van, so she came over, showed me her van. Uh, just so knocked much fan. my socks off. <laughs> Thank you. So colorful you. and beautiful and personalized and full of heart. Just such a much. homey van and super practical. It's a little overwhelming when people are like, wow, that's a, a lot of a, a lot of color. And I'm like, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> see, which you will see soon. Uh -huh. yeah. And also a lot of practical tips. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of practical tips. I can tell yeah. that you've been at this for a while. You've thought it through. Okay. Science teacher folks, mm -hmm. yes. And so let's go in and explore Laurel's van, her place of wonder, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, get to know Laurel a, a little bit more, too. Okay. I'm Laurel, and this is Bav. That's short for Big Ass Van. Uh, this is a 2017 Ram Promaster 136 wheelbase, so it's a 1500. It's got the high roof. I bought it off of the lot, brand new, completely empty. And over nine weekends, we built it out in my backyard. Uh, I had a lot of ideas and experience on things that I knew I wanted and didn't want. So it's very basic as far as its systems and everything like that. I don't have, uh, you know, a huge solar system. I don't have a huge electrical system. I don't have any of that stuff. And I use gallon jugs for water. So that's pretty much it. So anyway, if you'd like to come in for the tour, you can come on in. Um, if you turn to your right, you'll see my living room. <laughs> I love this. I love and the it's colors. Just, um, it's just literally a, you know, swivel base on the seat. And I have a cooler here that serves as pantry overstock and everything's labeled because, again, I'm an OCD. Um, I have a travel pantry here in the front seat that all of this goes over into that side when I'm driving. And uh, that's pretty much that. And you call this your living room? This is my living room. Okay. And so when I'm sitting in my living room, I have my table here next to me. And I have my uh, ashtray because I still do those horrible things. And everything that I need, snacks and everything, is like right here. And I can sit and look out the window. Now, the windows, if you look, have screens over them. Oh, I just made magnetic screens oh. so that I can have the windows open. And if it's raining, I can put them down because of the rain guards so I really that. like how you personalize them with your lat with your Thank lace you. well duct tape wasn't working for me <laughs> um so anyway I have all my blinds and everything that fit in the windows they're specifically made for the pro master mm. I have a side table here uh that you know I flip out and use this is all my shoe storage all three or four pairs and whatever else I have so going your, on your ottoman doubles uh, yeah my storage. ottoman doubles is storage um there's other bits and bobs and things in there, you know, the extra uh, dog collar for uh, other people's dogs uh, when they want to leave them with me. And I'm like, oh, okay, put them on the lead. Great. You love dogs. I love dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things. So from the living room, you get over here into the kitchen. This is actually the kitchen. Oh, look at this. And um, we designed this because when I say we, it's me and my partner, um, because I did not want all of the floor space taken up. So what I have is just um the butane burner that just flips down just like that and my kettle comes down and that's all it is so when i'm done all i have to do is flip it back in and secure it what so. the, i i really appreciate how much space this gives you to well, move around in when it's closed. Originally, the the deal was that we I would bring the dog along. So having extra floor space for her, she's only about 45 pounds, but she would live here. Well, when she got to a point, she was, um, she's old. She's got congestive heart failure and she's deaf. Mm -hmm. And so traveling her with her was not really a good idea. But um, 
So once we figured that out and I was like, okay, well, if it's just going to be me in here, then this space doesn't need to be left open. So I got a couple of these little Walmart type cabinets. Um, and I label everything cause that way I don't lose anything. Cause I figured out by the time I got to Roswell back in November, that I was losing things in 60 square feet of space, which is ridiculous. Uh, it always so, amazes me. <laughs> um, so anyway, everything's labeled because, uh, you know, it just makes my life easier uh, when you are living in something versus when you're just traveling in it. It's completely different. So anyway, there's pantry. Um, up here is junk drawer because everybody needs a junk drawer. Uh, more pantry and other things like, you know, uh, cosmetics, bathroom drawer, everything. Um, in the back... Here, if you come around, this is my little privacy thing uh, for when I'm sleeping and I don't want to um, see the light in the morning, even though I do have blackout shades in the front. Um, so I've got towels and sheets and tapestries and then my library. Um, and all the hooks are where I basically keep all my clothes. So, so let's, let's go through the clothes. Let's go okay. through your clothing a bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay before I started that um I was a minimalist anyway so I literally only had like four or five pairs of pants and five or six shirts of the same colors uh sleeveless and long sleeve and then I had sweaters or kimonos and like I said maybe three or four of those um but they all match so I can all I can put everything and mix and match so Ooh. something like this matches everything I own oh sure so there you go I can change that up and do whatever I need to do. So and then you can have less. I can have much less. Um, and seasonal things that aren't quite, you know, I use space bags and they live up here in the attic. Oh, let's, so, let's take a look at that. Uh, yeah, good luck. Right up there. Go ahead. <laughs> look at those labels. I really like these yeah. labels. <laughs> yeah. Duct tape and a Sharpie. That's life Life in general. So, <laughs> so you have, you but, have those, those vacuum um, uh, the suck out. The no, you don't have to suck them out. You literally just roll them up and the... Oh, it's so there's no vacuum. It's a space bag, but it literally does itself. So all you do is roll it up. Oh. So I roll my clothes up, layer them up, seal it, roll it out, seal it some more, roll it out. So, but um, to continue on, living room, kitchen, bathroom. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here we go. The so, money shot. Yeah. Oh, look Absolutely at the design. Money you yeah. The well, design and honestly, top. I was sitting uh, in outside of Seattle for a couple of weeks, um, and I got bored. And this is what happens when I get bored: things get decorated. <laughs> so let's. Can you show oh. uh, us the decoration? <laughs> really? Oh yeah, that's worth taking out. Oh, yeah. that's so, so pretty. So, but what this is actually the things behind you on the wall there are actually just stencils. So I use those as oh, stencils. If pretty. you look up above you on the ceiling fan, on the vent fan above you, uh, that actually was a cutting board, silicone cutting board. Oh, and yeah. I was like, okay, I just, I don't like the light coming in mm. in the morning, even though the vent cover is smoked, it's just not. So anyway. Um, that's really, okay, that's so, really nice how you even decorated the vent. <laughs> kitchen, bathroom, bedroom. The bed actually pulls out to a queen size bed, but I've got it bolted into full size because I don't need a queen size bed. Um, the shelves were just Home Depot shelves that we flipped over. The ceiling, a lot of people were, um, you know, going with tongue and groove when they were building out. Jeff, sit down. This is a beautiful oh, ceiling. Um, but the entire van is insulated with one inch poly ISO. Oh, and that, and that, like, and that's what's that is, um, yeah. So you can see that. These are just furring strips. What we did is ripped the board down from the plywood that was left over, oh. slipped the uh, painted poly ISO with the silver side up, so there's an air gap between the uh, ceiling and the, the roof, so that provides more insulation as well. And then the furring strips actually allow us to hang things from them. Oh! So, like, fishing poles and other stuff like that. Um, flooring... Ooh. I decided not to do uh, fancy stuff on the floor. Um, so we left the factory mat, some jigsaw puzzle pieces, and a tight weave rug. So that's pretty much all that oh, is. Oh, so these are the, um, the just, like the athletic the, yeah, uh, padding. Yeah, that's all they are. And right. they're waterproof. So. Padding. And this is tight weave, so it doesn't get a lot of, you know, if I spill something on it, it's 
uh, just soaks right up. Oh, that's a good so, idea. Dresser, power bank. I have two Jackery 240s and a solar suitcase right here that I just uh, put on hooks out on the slider when I need it. Solar suitcase. Oh, solar suitcase. Yes, the folding yep. suitcase. Just a 60 watt panel, three panels. And it's all I need because I don't do a lot of, I don't have a refrigerator. I have one, but I found that I wasn't using it. So I just mm -hmm. left it. What do you power with your? Uh, usually it's my cell phone and the vent fan. And since I've been out this trip in colder weather, I have discovered that it's nice to have a warm bed to climb into. So I took my 12 volt blanket and I use it as a mattress pad underneath my fitted sheet. Oh. And I turn that on at night before I go to get into bed, and it's all nice and snuggly then, and my feet don't get cold. So okay. I don't use it as a blanket. I use it as a mattress pad, so it's all warmed up. You and know, You know, some folks are it. nervous about sleeping on the coils of an um, electric blanket. What is your I don't have that? any problem with it because I don't leave it on all night. Oh, right. Because as long as it's warm when I get in, my body heat is is uh, contained yeah. because I have uh, you know the the regular sheet and then a, a coverlet and then I have a quilt and if it's super cold I have a down blanket uh, a down cover that I've uh, got and so I get that out it's in a, stuffed in a pillowcase and I have found uh, even sleeping in below freezing temperatures I am more than fine. I do have remote start. That's what the noggle is about here. Mm. And it vents either heat or cold from the um, vent here. So when I park at night, I'll just preset everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And also, if you close off the cab, which yeah. is what these curtains are about, yeah. you end up with a lot of warm and cold differentiation. So mm -hmm. like 10 degrees difference if the cab is closed off mm -hmm. versus uh, the back. And I've tried that because I've left them open going, oh, I want to be able to see the sunrise or, yeah, it's cold. Mm -hmm. And the glass is not, you know, mm -hmm. even with these covers, they're quilted. Um, it's not enough to keep the, the temperature differentiation down. And I'm, I'm, I'm big on waking up warm. Yeah, it's a crazy um, feeling. Plus, I do have a propane heater, which I do vent. Uh, I do open the, the vent fan, and I keep the window open a little bit when I'm running that. So Now, I'm curious. Do you have yeah. a manual window that you can open, or do you have to have your van on to open a window? I have to have the van on to open the windows. Now, the, the vent fan itself has, is oops, careful. Sorry. Um, it's just um, it's manual open, close, and turn on. It's um, I did not get the remote one because um, I didn't have uh, the funding at that particular moment. What kind of van? Is it the Max Air? It's a Max Air, mm -hmm. yeah. Very nice. And it runs perfectly fine. So, Do you find it's quiet? I know some folks have said that the Max Air is I, louder. I like uh, uh, kind of a white noise anyway. Mm. And I'm not generally running it at night unless it's super, super, super hot. Um, so I don't usually have that problem. Right. So, right. But under the bed is complete storage. Um, it's built on a frame that fits over two boxes on the wheel well. Um, don't know whether you can I mean you're welcome to go up underneath there we and can get see, a sense of but it but there's yeah. um I've got three totes across okay so I do That's work out uh with that but I do keep it bungeed so it doesn't fly around but it also can be onboard security um how, and that, that leads us to the question of how do you um, stay safe on the road as I, a solo I female generally traveler? uh I figure that people are going to just be people mm -hmm. and if someone really needs it badly enough and they feel like it's worth breaking in, one, they're going to have to deal with me and I'll be like, oh my gosh, do you need a hug? Uh, I can make you some soup. Oh, does your grandma know what you're doing? Kind of thing. Um, I've, you know, after teaching for 30 years and I've taught, uh, like I said, I taught overseas. I taught in a lot of places where other people didn't want to teach. Um, and so I've had a lot of experience dealing with uh, people who are misguided, angry, whatever. Uh, plus, I don't really have, I mean, I have a lot more than some people, but I don't have a lot of stuff that anybody would really want. <laughs> right. <laughs> and if right. they want it, honestly, okay, whatever, take it. 
I don't really have, you know, mm. anything. I, I, yeah, I'll give it to you if you really need it. So what a, what a generous spirit. Well, it's just stuff. Well, you, you it's learned, literally, it's just stuff. <laughs> well, from what you shared with me earlier, yeah. you learned that uh, in an, in a very special way. You shared with so, me that you had yeah. worked in the Peace Corps. Oh yeah. And that yeah, that, that was, there that, that was, um, kind of the first foray into otherworldliness, uh, so to speak. Um, I went over there after I graduated from college the first time and, um, I taught science in the middle of the jungle in, um, Central African Republic. And I lived with, uh, no running water, no electricity, no indoor plumbing for two years. And I realized at that point that I did not need a lot of stuff to be happy. And so when I came back from that experience, uh, it was kind of overwhelming the uh, societal expectations of stuff and mm -hmm. what you need. And I mean, granted, I have a lot of, of stuff in here that people are like, well, you don't need that. You don't need this. No, I don't. But it, if it makes me happy and it's just a little bit, it's, you know, but when there's a little bit too much. Yeah. So. But no, getting rid of stuff is 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 easy. You know, you don't really need as much as you think you do. Yeah. So a couple gallons of water and people will be like, well, how do you take a bath? Well, honestly, I have a rag and I have a little basin there. And is this I'll, your basin? That's my basin. And both feet fit in my basin. Mm -hmm. So this is my sink and my bathtub. Um, I'll literally boil extra water in the mornings and put it in a thermos. And at night when I'm ready to go to bed, I just, so my thermos is right here living in a van down by the river, um, <laughs> um, I'll, you know, put some water in the basin and I'll wash everything down. And I do take um, the wipes and I use those for the really stinky parts because you don't necessarily want to use the same rag on oh, parts that are uh, yeah. more bacteria laden. Yes, it's a nice and, way you, to put it. and you as a science, science teacher. teacher. Yeah, former science teacher. Mm -hmm. um, well, no, my friends would say, no, you're always a science teacher. You just happen to be retired. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the thing is, is when I'm done with that and, you know, I've done my little pedicure thing and everything, I will put my gray water in this. This is just gray water. And if I'm somewhere where I don't have um, adequate water supply, I can use that to flush my toilet. Oh, Cause it's just gray water oh so because i uh, you only only liquids in the toilet uh solids are in a bag with some cat litter and if i'm in the desert i bury it like a normal good nomad does and if i'm somewhere else i wrap it up like you would a diaper and just toss it into the regular garbage what kind of so, toilet do you have what's the brand it's it's a i think it's just a camco travel yeah camco camco yep okay and it's super, super easy for everybody who's like, ooh, that's gross. Um, I actually have um, a Cracker Barrel bag that's the vinylized type bag that it, the bottom and the top separate. The top is uh, clean water. The bottom is, is a black tank. And it separates very simply. The bottom literally fits down in that bag and I can carry it into any bathroom, rest area, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's camouflaged. But, um, but no, it's super easy. And... It holds about three gallons, so I end up having to empty it about every about every week, week to ten days. It just depends on where I am and whether there's other facilities available. You can go so a long time. I can go a long time. What's your drinking water? What um, do you store It that? literally is just, it's the same water as everything. It's just awesome. these, and then I have a, a spigot here underneath the garbage that's about a gallon. Oh, I see. And then I have water up underneath here. I have four gallons here. Under your bed. Under the bed. And then I have another emergency gallon or two up front. So, so but I didn't want to do the water tanks. I didn't want to do complex electrical systems, all that stuff. It just wasn't something I was interested in. Right, right. You're welcome to come along and look sure, at the Sure, let's do that. Yeah, you're probably going to have to squeeze in here, so. Okay. Goes all the way to the front. I have a 12 foot telescoping ladder on the side there. Oh, I behind see. Behind the water. Yep. Um, it goes, it's three back. I have a gravity chair here. I have all of my gear on the doors here, my vest and everything. And on the other side is my snorkel gear, a tent, that kind of stuff. Oh, my gosh, a snorkel gear. Uh, no, what's a gravity chair? Um, it's one of those that, like, is. Leans all the way oh, back all the way, and the so feet you can do go stargazing. up. So I can do stargazing and things like that. So I'm curious. You mentioned that you scuba dive. I did. I did um, an open water dive certificate down in Aruba several years ago. Um, 
I wanted to be able to go everywhere on earth. <laughs> <laughs> everywhere on earth. <laughs> everywhere on earth. Um, unfortunately, the scuba thing isn't really my bag. It's, um, I like snorkeling better. I like to be on the top where I can look up. And, um, but I, I like to be able to say I did it. I do have my open water dive certificate, so that's good. Um, the snorkeling thing is just more my, my speed. Mm -hmm. um, I don't sink. <laughs> you don't? I don't sink. Sink. I have uh, evidently the most buoyant behind in two countries oh, yeah. documented. <laughs> oh, it gosh. took uh, 18 pounds to sink me in the pool and 20 pounds in the ocean. <laughs> it didn't surprise me. I mm. swam in college and I swam distance because I wouldn't sink. I wasn't oh. fast, but I was finished. So and I was like, a, it's you know. kind of like a superpower. Yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what are some of the other passions uh, and hobbies that you are able to continue even while living on the road? Oh, I get to talk to people and that's, you know, people will, you know, if you talk to anybody who's had the unfortunate circumstance to park next to me, they're like, she talks a lot. I like to get to know people. Mm -hmm. I like to uh, mm -hmm. find out, people, you know, about people. I like to, you know, listen to their stories, tell mine. Mm -hmm. um, just being able to get you know, a feel and being able to go anywhere that you want. Mm -hmm. And I don't tend to meet strangers, so making friends is not really a problem. Mm -hmm. um, I was in India getting my oil changed, and a woman stepped out of her car, and I complimented her. I said, oh, my gosh, you, you look so lovely today. And 45 minutes later, I now have a place to shower and stay and do laundry in India. Uh, <laughs> same kind of thing happened in Oregon. I was up on a coast on a lookout just hanging out. Guy gets out of his truck with his dog, and I'm like, "Can I pet your dog?" And we keep in touch now. Well, we, you know, we spent two days talking, and uh, you know, a cheeseburger down in town, and he was just like, and you know, his family talked about his family, his wife, and the dog, and just philosophy and stuff, and mm -hmm. you know, and so I'm not, I'm not having any problems meeting people and making friends. Yeah. So. <laughs> that's that's